let's talk about my ultimate book recommendations. My name is Charlotte, if you are new here. If you're not new, welcome back. It's lovely to see you again. As I said, we're, today we're going to be talking about my ultimate book recommendations. I'm going to run through kind of genre by genre. We're going to do fantasy, romance, crime, and just a mix of fiction that's going to cover like general fiction, contemporary fiction, historical fiction, literary fiction. I just don't have enough for their own categories. We're going to dive into each genre. I'm going to talk a little bit about each book, why it's a book that I will always recommend, and kind of go into a little bit about what each book is about. So that being said, it may be a little bit of a long video. Grab yourself a hot beverage. I have a hot chocolate this afternoon. And let's just jump straight into things. We are kicking things off with the fantasy genre. So fantasy is very much a genre that I have gotten into in the past kind of few months, very much at the end of 2023, kind of the autumn of 2023. And these are the books that I have discovered in the genre that I just love and that I think are either really good for people to get started with or just good books in general and I've tried to make sure that they are all quite different to each other as well so let's dive straight in first up we have Powerless by Lauren Roberts this is a book that I literally will not shut up about I talk about all of the time this is about Payden who is an ordinary and she lives in the kingdom of Ilya and you like can't, aren't allowed to be ordinary that it is illegal there was like an illness that meant everyone had powers some people didn't get powers so those people were killed basically and it's about Payden so she is an ordinary pretending to be a psychic in order to survive and one day she is in the slums and she ends up saving Prince Kai and her fighting off these guys to save Kai basically gets her enrolled into the purging trials which is like a very Hunger Games-esque situation in Ilya so we are following the journey between Payden and Kai and it is incredible like there's so much tension in every single way like it's quite high stakes because you know the whole time that like Payden is like living illegally basically like she's not allowed to be doing what she's doing and she's going into these trials with all of these people with like crazy powers and she has no powers like she can she's like a human so yeah i love this book i think it's so fun the reason that i recommend it is because it is a ya so it does just make it quite an easy read and i think it's very reminiscent of like more kind of movies that you may have seen like the hunger games like divergent that kind of thing so it just works really really well as a great book for most people to jump into especially if you're trying to jump into this genre the next book and it's kind of a series that i am recommending with actually these next three and to be fair powerless although the second book hasn't come out but there is a novella coming out in april now and then the second book comes out in july so definitely another reason to read that book because we are being fed by lauren roberts but moving on to the next book we have once upon a broken heart by stephanie garber this is a very much like a fairy tale fantasy which is really fun it is another ya one which again it makes it a really nice kind of easy quick read this is about evangeline fox and basically she goes to the prince of hearts who is a fate they exist in a world with fates who can decide people's fate basically but self-explanatory in the name so she goes to the Prince of Hearts to basically make her, like, the guy that she thinks is her true love. He's getting married to someone else and she wants to stop the wedding. So she goes to the Prince of Hearts to ask for that to be done. In exchange for doing that, like Jack's doing that, the Prince of Hearts, he wants three kisses from Evangeline. And she's like, yeah, sure, let's do it. So she decides to give him these three kisses and then we basically follow the journey of these three kisses how they kind of go, what happens from there with all of them, how it's not all as it seems. I don't want to give too much away because it's quite a, it takes a lot of twists and turns that you wouldn't necessarily expect, but I love this. I love the world that it exists in. Like it's so clever and like, oh, it's just beautiful. The writing is beautiful. I, I just think it's a really enjoyable book. Like so enjoyable one thing i always get asked with these books is if you have to read caravel first because that is the recommended reading order by the author i brought this book without even knowing that caravel existed and i didn't have any issues i am actually going to be starting caravel i think i'm gonna start caravel this evening as i'm filming this but yeah so i will talk about that like more in future videos caravel is going to be in a reading vlog so i will kind of talk about that in that vlog if i find that 
that my Caravel reading experience is ruined by reading this first, but I definitely didn't kind of go into the series and feel like I didn't know what was happening because I hadn't read Caravel. Like I didn't know it was a thing until I'd read The Ballad of Never After, which is the second book in the series. So definitely something to be conscious of if you do want to read the series, but you don't want to read the Caravel series, because I know some people just aren't that interested in them. Next up, we have one that is super, super different, and we are going into more of our adult fantasy now. So the next one we have is the atlas six and again i'm talking about the whole trilogy i have a reading vlog for this series which i will lead in the card somewhere i don't ever know what side they are on but i have a reading vlog for this book and this series so this is about six magicians that all kind of get entered with the opportunity to enter into a society which is for like the alexandrian library but only five magicians can make it. So in the first book, we follow their first year living in a house. They all live in a house together as part of the entrance. And they're kind of doing like a fellowship. Like there is a lot of academic study. So this is kind of a fantasy crossed with a dark academia. And it's this one, especially very much is heavy on the dark academia vibes. It's really interesting and it's really beautifully written. Olivia Blake very kind of heavily goes in on like quotable phrases and words another thing with this book as well it is on kindle unlimited it is really handy that it is on kindle unlimited because i do think the writing style is going to be quite like i love it or hate it for people i loved it but yeah and then the final recommendation that we have for the fantasy genre is fourth wing again i re kind of recommend this as the series so fourth wing and iron flame this is about Violet who is basically living in this world where they have like a war college so you enroll into it and you will either be a scribe where your role is kind of documenting battles and history you can be like um like a medic but it's not called a medic I can't remember what it's called let me refer to the other book so you can be a scribe a healer or in the infantry quadrant or you can be in the rider's quadrant where you are a dragon rider. I have seen this book described as Top Gun with dragons. And I would say, yeah, probably. Like, I've not really seen Top Gun, but from what I understand of it, yeah, probably. So Violet ends up becoming a rider. She kind of has always thought that she would go into Scribe Quadrant, but she gets made to become a rider. And this book is basically going through her first year at the College Bagsia. I think is how it's pronounced it's her first year there and we go through her journey as a rider what that entails and it's super exciting like it's super fun that as you can see like I have to have quite a bit of this I love this it was just like a an exciting book I was a bit kind of like unsure about the whole dragon thing but I actually love the dragons. Like, if, I think if you're unsure about the whole dragon thing, like, it's not, it, it's not as cringe as it necessarily sounds. Like, I feel like it is something that sounds a bit like, oh, but it's so much better than it sounds with the dragons. And the romance in this is next level. This is quite a spicy book. So if you don't like spice, that is something to be warmed off. There's some kind of closed door spice in this one. Um, it's not really closed door, but it's not like graphic spice. But like, that, there, there's, there's spice in it but yeah this one is pretty spicy but so so good but yeah that is it for my fantasy recommendations let's talk about romance recommendations the first one i have is a book again i talk about it all the time i love it after i do by taylor jenkins read this is a second chance romance um, and it is a little bit different it is kind of like a bit of a fiction with very heavy romance subplot but i would still describe it as a romance although on the back it says fiction so i'm gonna call it a romance but yeah and it is about lauren and ryan they got together when they were in college and we are now kind of a year into their marriage and they really aren't sure if they love each other so they decide to take a one year break they have a complete year off from each other like ryan moves out they do a year no contact and this book basically documents that year break from each other it's so heartbreaking but so amazing at the same time like i i love it i love it so much i like i talk about it all the time you guys know next up we have flawless by elsie silver 
This again is, I just love it. I love it. So this is a cowboy romance. This is from the Chestnut Spring series. All of the Chestnut Spring series is a cowboy romance about the Eaton brothers. Each book is about a different brother and they live on the ranch in Chestnut Springs. This is about Rhett, who is a professional bull rider, who basically at the start we see that he's gotten into trouble. He's like spat milk out or said he doesn't like milk, but he's got like a big milk sponsor basically. So his manager, he sends his daughter in to basically babysit him um, and make sure that he behaves himself so they don't lose any more sponsors. So that is kind of the backdrop to the relationship. She has to go on tour with him. She's following him around, watching him do his bull riding. And we see a little romance start up in that. When I talk about this book, I am recommending the whole series. I am only three books in because I'm kind of like trying to spend as much time as possible in Chestnut Springs. Like I don't want to leave it. So we're longing out my reading experience, but I would still definitely recommend them. I really like these. They're very easy reads. They are very, very spicy. With the Elsie Silver books, you do hit like 50% and it does just become all spice. So that is something to be conscious of if you don't like reading a lot of spice. And in this one, I don't think there's any spice. I think it's all closed door. I don't remember there being any spice in any Taylor Jenkins read book that I've read. So yeah, but this one, spicy. Then we have Last Time We Met by Emily Houghton. Houghton? So this is a kind of second chance childhood friends to lovers romance and it is about Eleanor and Finn who were like inseparable as kids and then something happens and it drives them apart and they haven't spoken for like 15 years when the book takes place but then through a series of fairly traumatic events they are brought back together for the book and we see them rekindling their friendship and relationship and yeah it's a really cute story it's quite sad in places i don't think this one is spicy i don't remember it being particularly spicy but yeah it's a it's just a nice kind of childhood friends to lovers it very much has like the same energy as love rosie which we love we love to see a book like love rosie really don't we next up we have happy place by emily henry again i talk about this book all the time i absolutely love it this is about harriet and Wynne, who are engaged up until six months ago where they break up but they didn't tell their friends and now we fast forward to the summer every summer for one week they go on holiday to one of their friends um like cottages in maine i think and they'd kind of made an agreement that one of them wouldn't go but they get like Harriet gets there and Wynne is there and it's like oh my god like, we've not actually seen each other since we broke up because we broke up over the phone anyway don't want to give too much away and we basically spend the week with them and so it's kind of like a fake dating kind of second chance romance it is really enjoyable I love Emily Henry's writing I think when you really relate to her characters they're so so good but yeah this like broke me in places like completely broke me in places but also like fixed me at the end like it was just a really good a really good book about kind of friendship and love and all of that fun stuff and the next one is actually one that i don't have a physical copy of i received an arc of this a gifted arc advanced reader copy if you're not familiar so this book comes out i can't remember when i will put it on the screen with a picture of the cover a Collision of Stars by Georgia Stone. This is an independently published book um, and it is a romance of course but in the romance genre and it is kind of like a friends to lovers but like a fake friendship. So it is about Ava and Finn and Finn is only in London for the summer. He kind of does consultancy so he goes between loads of different countries. So he's in London for the summer. He becomes a regular at the coffee shop where Ava works. Ava has a friend that is always on her back like telling her that she needs more friends so her and Finn kind of form this fake friendship because it will get Ava's roommate off of her back like she will think that she has a friend and Finn will gain someone that he can do his bucket list with so we basically go through them doing the bucket list together they hit some like exciting spots in London we the, some of the things they do are just like amazing and we watch this kind of romance start to form but everything like they you kind of see them start to catch feelings for each other but they always have this lingering backdrop of him not being in London forever and oh my god I literally I finished this book this morning I had like three and a half hours of it to read I sat down at 10am like oh, I'll just read a little bit 
I sat down and I literally didn't get back up again until I finished it. Like I was glued to it. I didn't check my phone once in that whole time, which is genuinely unheard of for me. I like, I was glued to it. I was sobbing my eyes out. I don't think I've ever cried so much at a book. Like there was some really, really sad storylines, but oh my God, it was, it was so good definitely definitely read it like 100 i'm recommending that book to everyone right now but that brings us to the end of romance so let's move on to our crime recommendations so i've got four books in the crime section it's crime and thriller i would say it's not a genre that i read a huge huge amount but if someone would ask me for a book to recommend from these, these are the books I would give. So we have Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. I think these are great books. They're really, really easy to follow. The concept is really fun. So if you don't know what these books are about, they are about a group of old people that live in a retirement home together that every Thursday they try and solve an unsolved, like a cold case in that area. So that is the backdrop and in this book an actual crime, like a, bru a brutal killing, takes place where they live and they're like we're gonna solve it, we're gonna like, they're like we, we already spend our Thursday solving murders, let's actually solve an active case. So that is what this book is about, it's so like fun just because of the people that it, it is, like the, the old people, like it makes it like quite comical in places because it is these older people it's definitely just like a fun kind of cozy crime next up we have the skeleton key by erin kelly this is a book that i read for my book club and i'm really glad that i did read it because i don't think i ordinarily would pick this up this is more of a thriller but it doesn't really become a thriller until the second half this is about frank churcher who wrote a children's book that was inspired by like a nursery rhyme or a folk song I think that was about like a like bones being scattered and it basically the book became a like a treasure hunt and there was always this one bone that nobody could find because it was this lady called Eleanor her golden bones like that's kind of the the premise of this book but kind of the journey that then happens is people become really really obsessed looking for easter eggs for this and it tears the family apart but then i think it's like 20 years later they decide to basically do like a 20 year edition like a special edition it comes back the hunt comes back he's going to announce like where this bone has been the entire time but something goes miss like something goes very very wrong and that's kind of when we really dive into the thriller. Another thing to be aware of with this is it is set against the backdrop of COVID. COVID does exist in this and it kind of goes goes in detail there but this is just like a quite an exciting thriller and also quite a different thriller um, with a super different premise to anything that I have kind of seen or heard of before which I think makes it really exciting and it's definitely one of the reasons that I would really recommend this as a thriller if you are just looking for a thriller that's like a little bit different to your normal thriller I guess. And then we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I really enjoyed this. It is a YA thriller and again I think YA is a really good place to start reading. Obviously it's made for kind of 14 to 18 year olds so it's like very easy to read. It's good to be able to put like up and down. So this is about Pip who decides to do her EPQ. So an EPQ in the UK is something that you will do alongside your A-levels in your final years of school. It's like a coursework based project. Um, so in their, their town five years ago, there was a school girl called Andy Bell that was murdered by someone called Sao Singh, supposedly. And basically Pip decides that she wants to, to crack the case because she doesn't think that Sao did it. So we follow her on the journey of doing this project and also trying to solve this murder and everything that happens in between. We have a little bit of a romance subplot in this, which is quite cute, but yeah, it's really good. This really reminds me of Pretty Little Liars. Like this is definitely a book I would recommend to the Pretty Little Liar fans. Um, when we kind of start finding out a bit more about the case and a bit more about what went on, it is giving Alison's Night in the Red Top, 
but yeah I would definitely recommend this if you are wanting to maybe get into the crime genre or wanting to get into reading. The last crime book I have is again it wants something that I was gifted a proof copy of and this doesn't come out until March 2024 which is this year. I don't know why I'm you know, even though we're January 2024, it still feels like 2024 is a really far time away. Anyway, <laughs> it's How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. So this is about Frances, who in 1965, when she's 17, she has her murder told to her in her tarot cards at a fair. She then spends her whole life being like, I'm gonna be murdered. And she gathers loads of information with people. And then it comes to her will reading. Her niece, Annie, is sent down to where Frances lives. Frances has been murdered basically in that time. It's a bit crazy. Um, and Annie has to end up solving the murder because whoever solves the murder will win Francis's millions. So it's so good. I feel like I just really missold it, but it's a really good murder mystery. It's again, a cozy mystery, um, like a cozy crime. And it's on kind of two timelines. We have the present timeline and then a past timeline. And the jump between is really interesting. And it's just everything that happens in this book is so unexpected. I was so shocked the entire time I was reading it. At no point did I have any kind of suspect for who could have done it. Like it kept changing and tw the twists and turns. Like, oh, I just absolutely adored this book. I think it, it was such a good crime. Like I was so gripped to it the entire time. Hot chocolate break. We are now on to our last genre, which is just all of our non-sensical fiction basically. <laughs> Kicking things off we have Grown Ups by Marion Keys. I really like this book so it follows the kind of wives and yeah I think it's just the wives of Johnny, Ed and Liam Casey. So they're all so different but they're tied together through their husbands and we follow their individual journeys with their lives and they all kind of have their own issues within that and we are following this storyline that everything kind of ties together comes apart ties together um and it is just a really kind of clever book i don't really know how to describe it without giving spoilers away because it's been a little while since i've read this but yeah we really experience their journeys and how different they are and we kind of mainly follow them when they're coming together at different social events and their nerves towards those events because of how different they are and how different their marriages are like we have people that are very much like a nuclear family then we have people that are super different to that and we just see how they all interact with each other and their different perceptions of each other and how they kind of differ from the perceptions that they have of each other if that makes sense it's a really fun book and it's really interesting and the characters are all really really interesting i yeah i would definitely recommend it it is super super character driven um so if you don't like character driven books you probably might not like this but then i always say i don't like character driven books and then when i say i like a book it's and i'm like oh it's really character driven so i think it always just depends on like if you like the characters and how your relationship with those are but yeah, definitely would recommend this. Um, it also takes place in Dublin. And something I have discovered is I seem to really like fiction that is Irish. Like, I don't know why. But some of my other recommendations, you will, you will see that. Next up, we have... We actually have two Taylor Jenkins read books, but I will talk about them separately. So we have Daisy Jones and The Six, and Carrie Soto is back. So starting with Daisy Jones and The Six, this is about a band called Daisy Jones and The Six. It's kind of loosely based on Fleetwood Mac from what I have gathered. This is basically about the, the band are telling their own story and it is written in like documentary form. So you know around Christmas time, Channel 5 specifically in the UK plays a lot of like music based documentaries where everyone will talk about the band, like they'll have different interviews that's what this book is like so that is the main reason that I will always recommend this book to people because I think it's so different to any other book just from the way the story is told it is pretty much all dialogue like you can let me open like the first page so this is like an early page and you can really see here that the way it is done is like it's just got the person's name and then them talking a little bit about the band at that time or about themselves at that time which makes it really interesting because you are hearing everything in like retrospect you're not hearing things as they were happening everything is in retrospect which is so interesting like so interesting i really want to watch the series because they, i know that it is an amazon series so yeah it definitely 
it's again it's really character driven but it's so interesting like i also really like books kind of about celebrity i find them so interesting so yeah i would definitely recommend this and then we have carrie soto is back this is about a tennis player called carrie soto who she holds like the record for a certain amount of grand slams or something then one day she's at the new york open it's, I always call it the New York Open. It's called the US Open. She's at the US Open and she basically realises like her, it's, she's going to be beaten. Her title is going to be taken away from her. So she decides to come out of retirement and this is her journey coming out of retirement. We also go back in time and we see her journey becoming a tennis player. It's really interesting and it doesn't sound like it would be as fascinating as it is. But Taylor Jenkins Reid has managed to make it so so gripping like we have the actual tennis matches in this like you can see it will go on to like the french open and then you will get a breakdown of each match and the tension oh my gosh it literally felt like you're watching a sports match where you're really really rooting for the people like she creates such incredible tension within this book it is amazing i i would definitely like of course i definitely recommend it is in this series it is in this youtube video yeah definitely give this a read next up we have normal people by sally rooney i have really recently read this book i posted a reading vlog of this a few days ago oh my gosh did i love this book it healed something in me if you have ever been in an on again off again situationship read this book it is going to be the most cathartic experience of your entire life i literally i brought this book with me to therapy yesterday to talk to my therapist about it like that is how deep it cut 100 percent read this like it's so good i can't really say what it's about because it's it's just about Connor and Marianne and their experience from like their last year of school or through university, I would say. That's kind of the best way to describe it. And it's a bit situation shippy. Cause yeah, otherwise it's just gonna get a little bit spoilers. The final book of this video and the final fiction we have is The List by Yomi Adejoke. This is about Ola, who works for a feminist magazine as a journalist. She typically breaks like these crazy stories that are very much centered around women and feminism. And she is set to get month in, um, she, <laughs> and she is set to get married in a month. However, one day she goes into work and she sees that a list of abusive men in the media has been published, and her fiance Michael is on that list. So throughout most of this book. We are going through both Ola and Michael's perspective on what they should do. We have Ola figuring out like, she's written articles similar to this list and about things like this list before. And she has this whole moral dilemma of like, it's her partner, she believes that he didn't do anything like that and he isn't capable of doing anything like that. But then she's like, well, am I just as bad as the other women that would like or other people that would always be like no so and so's not like that he wouldn't do that so we have her moral dilemma and then we also have michael's dilemma of being on a list like this and being accused of something like this especially as a black man in the uk and we explore a lot of issues kind of around social media we what it's like to be uh, there's a lot about what it's like to be a black man in the uk we also experience like and meet characters that are very intersectional and then have and have other issues related to this as well which i can't really divulge without too many spoilers because there are some quite big shocks that are really good to see but yeah this is such an interesting book and the issues that it covers are so important so it's so i, I think this is a really important read and it's definitely a book that i think like everyone should read at some point because it's it's super important but that rounds this video up thank you so much for watching please let me know down below what your book recommendations are like what you are recommending all the time what books you always tell people to read because i want to know i want to read them but yeah that is everything from me i hope you enjoyed please do like and subscribe if you did and i will catch you in the next one